what if I could steal or intercept your SMS text messages? What would I learn about you? Maybe juicy details about your hot and steamy love affair with chocolate, or your mom's constant meme posts, or your dad's constant links to fake conspiracy th news stories. Well, what about your two-factor authentication messages from your bank or any other service where you have multi-factor authentication activated? Well, that is what SIM swapping is. What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode where we're going to talk about T-Mobile. Actually, we're going to talk about the fact that T-Mobile got hacked again, this time by Lapsus Cybercrime Gang. My last episode about T-Mobile was way back in August 2021. Remember when they got hacked through some internet-facing machine and had 40 million customers worth of data exposed? The quote by the attackers back then in August 2021 was, This was not exactly rocket science. It was a misconfigured access point T-Mobile used for testing. Since 2018, this latest hack is the fifth time T-Mobile has been hacked in a major way. Now, in case you missed the episode about their last hack in August 2021, and want to watch it, the link is above, it's in the comment section, it's at the end of the episode. But today, we're going to talk specifically about Lapsus penetrating T-Mobile's network and stealing real source code from T-Mobile. 30,000 different projects were stolen from T-Mobile. Now, the access to T-Mobile's systems allowed Lapsus to do SIM swapping, what I started this episode talking about. Now, I hope you'll watch the full episode, but if not, you can now skip directly to my insights at the end of the episode, right from the timeline below. For the rest of you, let's go through the story together to get some context and see what we can learn to protect ourselves and others. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. The logs show the Lapses Group has access to the network of T-Mobile multiple times or had access in multiple times in March. The hackers had stolen source code from multiple company projects. Again, 30,000 projects. The VPN credentials for initial access are said to have been obtained from illicit websites like Russian Market with the goal of gaining control of T-Mobile employee accounts ultimately allowing the threat actor to carry out SIM swapping attacks at will. The bigger challenge for Lapsus was the subject mentioned by Lapsus Jobs. In most cases, this involved social engineering employees at the targeted firm into adding one of their computers or mobile devices to the list of devices allowed to authenticate with the company's virtual private network, wrote Krebs from uh, Krebs and Security. The messages show Lapsus members continuously targeted T-Mobile employees whose access to internal company tools could give them everything they needed to conduct hassle-free SIM swaps, reassigning a target's mobile phone number to a device that's in the control of the Lapsus gang. Congratulations, you're doing a great job by wanting to learn about the hack of T-Mobile by the Lapsus Cyber Gang. I appreciate your support by watching my episode about it. If you're new to my channel and have not already, please consider subscribing to my channel and smashing the bell to be notified when I upload new episodes where I give you insights into the newest important cybersecurity news stories like this one. With my insights, you can be better prepared to protect your company, your family, and of course yourself against these and other cyber attacks. So hit the subscribe button now and let's continue learning about this story together. T-Mobile US provides wireless service, messaging, and data service in the United States mainland, including Alaska, Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and the US Virgin Islands under the T-Mobile and Metro by T-Mobile brands. The telecom company says no customer or government information was compromised, despite the images shared in the chats show the gang gaining access to the internal Atlas system, along with Slack and Bitbucket accounts. The system's access contained no customer or government information or other similarly sensitive information, and we have no evidence that the intruder was able to obtain anything of value, T-Mobile said. Our systems and processes worked as designed, the intrusion was rapidly shut down and closed off, and the compromised credentials used were rendered obsolete. The gang obtained the VPN credentials for initial access to target systems from dark web marketplaces, then they used the access to perform SIM swapping attacks. 
perhaps to mollify his furious teammates at the in the Lapsus gang, White changed the subject and told them he'd gained access to T-Mobile's Slack and Bitbucket accounts. He said he'd figured out how to upload files to the virtual machine he had access to at T-Mobile, wrote Krebs. Roughly 12 hours later, White posts a screenshot in their private chat showing his, autom his automated script had downloaded more than 30,000 source code repositories from T-Mobile. Over the last months, Lapsus Gang compromised many prominent companies such as NVIDIA, Samsung, Ubisoft, Mercado Libre, Vodafone, Microsoft, Okta, and Globant. So what can we learn? T-Mobile got hacked. So what? Who cares? Well, T-Mobile has something like 108 million customers, so there are at least 108 million people who should care. Maybe you're one of them. Any one of those 108 million people could have fallen victim to a SIM swap attack, which opens up that user and potentially anyone connected to that user to attack. Friends, family, Twitter followers, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, there's a very long list here. I'm not going to focus on the fact that T-Mobile has had five really major hacks in the last five years that opens up their customers to serious harm. That's almost one a year, in case you didn't do the math. Sometimes it's two a year, blah, blah, blah. I'm also not going to focus on the fact that the Lapsus gang apparently stole source code for 30,000 different T-Mobile projects from their Bitbucket or whatever Git, uh, or Git repo they use. That's 30,000 apps from T-Mobile that are in the hands of Lapsus and most likely soon a ton of other hacker groups. 30,000 different projects or repos. That's insane. I'm not going to focus on either of those two points. I want to focus on SIM swapping. Okay, what is SIM swapping? A SIM swap or SIM swap scam, also known as port out scam, SIM splitting, smishing, and SIM jacking, is a type of account takeover fraud that generally targets a weakness in two-factor authentication and two-step verification in which the second factor or second step is a text message or a call placed to a mobile telephone. So you first enter in your password, then they either send you an SMS or they call you to get that second code that you need to then type in. The fraud exploits a mobile phone service provider's ability to seamlessly port a phone number from one phone to a new phone containing a completely different SIM card. Why would you want to even have this functionality? Well, what if you lose your phone or your phone gets stolen or maybe you switch from T-Mobile to some other provider? Any one of these cases involve a legitimate SIM swap by your provider. Now, malicious SIM swapping is usually performed through social engineering. This means a human gathers information about the victim, their name, their social security number, or whatever info they can grab from some hacked database source somewhere. Then the human attacker calls up the cell phone co company and manipulates some unwitting person, maybe a new person just started working there, really excited to be on customer service. They manipulate that person on the other line into adding a new phone to the telephone number. Now this disconnects the original physical phone and SIM card from the network and now the new phone can send and receive text messages like it's the phone or the, the original telephone number. Now what can an attacker do? Let's take a big example. Let's imagine if Donald Trump was still on Twitter and his phone was SIM swapped. His Twitter account password could be reset, and his hundreds of millions of followers could be duped into sending millions of dollars to hackers instead of Donald Trump. Okay, let's use Elon Musk as an example. Same scenario, or any number of high-profile people. Now, what if there's just some random guy who has 50 million Bitcoin and he gets SIM swapped? Through the SIM swap and knowing that he has the 50 million Bitcoin, an attacker can steal all his Bitcoin. Again, SIM swapping is generally done via social engineering. But what if it doesn't need to be? In comes this software, Atlas. Now, the reports in the article about the hack indicate the attacker's lapsus cyber gang had no access to customer data or government data. 
but that they did have access to T-Mobile's Atlas. Do you know what Atlas is? Well, Atlas is T-Mobile's proprietary, meaning they built it themselves, customer management tool. In T-Mobile's own words, <clears throat> for modern care worker, care worker, they're not nurses, they mean customer support reps. So, for modern care workers, juggling browser windows, software and apps can be dizzying. Oh, I'm so dizzy from all the browser window swapping. But Atlas will bring everything they need into a single system built with micro apps that are easy to customize. Further down the road, Atlas will be a dynamic desktop interface that adapts to the individual needs of the expert and customer, powered by T-Mobile's in-house artificial intelligence. In the most common, if the most common call for a specific market is about an outage, Atlas will serve the expert information about coverage and repair times. In other markets, Atlas will serve experts other relevant information. Okay, I'm done reading. So, Lapsus apparently had direct access to T-Mobile's internal proprietary customer management software. And I'll remind you here that apparently Lapsus downloaded the source code of 30,000 T-Mobile projects. How many of those projects are these micro apps in Atlas? Or what if one of those projects is the actual source code for Atlas? Now, none of this has been explained or even mentioned by T-Mobile, but I beg the question. Tell me. I want to know. Now, the main point here is that Lapsus had access to this Atlas tool, which could be used to perform SIM swapping without social engineering any human. Again, SIM swapping involves an attacker calling the mobile service provider. Hello, this is John. This is my social security number. Hello, John. Thank you for verifying yourself. What can I help you with? Uh, well, customer support, I need to change my phone. I'd like you to do a SIM swap for me. That is SIM swapping using social engineering. Two people involved. You take out the customer support rep and go right to the software and you have a really dangerous situation. What if you, again, have the source code and could build an automated SIM swapping tool of your own? Then you just hack back into T-Mobile using stolen credentials or some other attack vector because apparently it's super easy. Remember, five major hacks in five years? Once you're in, you do mass SIM swap attacks or maybe super targeted SIM swap attacks against top level secret agents or politicians or presidents or major CEOs. So how much time did you spend thinking about security surrounding your cell phone or your cell phone provider. You're no longer just putting yourself at risk. Your phone could be used to attack your parents or your kids or your friends or your followers, either to infect them with some mobile malware or banking trojans to steal their money or to lure them into dangerous situations or even put their job or their work in jeopardy. I suggest you take a hard look at not just your cell phone account and your provider and its security measures, but also your other important accounts. Also, educate your family and employees and about the dangers and hey, maybe have them watch this episode too. With that, I say thanks again for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe if you haven't already and smash the bell if you haven't already and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. <laughs>